strange world, world in my mind. With a glow like sunset and a thrill like dawn. Strange world, swirl in my mind. With the living people of the living dream. Strange dreams in my dream world. A world, a world. Strange dreams, strange world. A world, a world. Dreams, world, a world. Sonra recalls receiving his first piano followed by a solo piano performance of I Remember You from August of 1953. I was a very good student on the teachers and everything they were trying to teach me. I was one of the listeners and I tried to apply myself with all that thinking, you know, with uh, sight reading. I did that. Well, they were teaching that. I suppose they do in most schools. The school I was going to, they did. And, um, but I never was thinking about being a musician. But when... About maybe when I was 10 or 11, I came home, and uh, I had a, well, they said birthday. I had a so-called arrival date present and uh, from my mother, and it was a piano. But my grandmother said, well, uh, what is she going to do with a piano? And my sister said, well, I studied the uh, uh, piano, and I'm the one who should have the piano. And my mother said, but you, you married, you know, you... You let your husband get you a piano or something. And she said, well, he doesn't play the piano, and you got him a piano. And uh, anyway, I sat down and played the piano. So then they brought me different things, like uh, some church songs. Some of my grandmother liked church music, and I played that. And uh, a friend of mine named William Grayhead, he's a, he studied violin, so he said I was playing by him. Uh, so he went home and got some music, he brought that, and I played that. And everything they put before me, I sight read it. In view of understanding the roots of R&B, we must acknowledge its gospel, jazz, and blues influences. Then we must acknowledge the group that would become the foundation of the late 1940s, early 1950s R&B doo-wop style by the name of the Ink Spots. Provided is an excerpt from a live 1944 air check with the Ink Spots performing their signature composition, If I Didn't Care. Fred Sanford of Sanford & Son, this one's for you, baby. 
I don't need my heavy-duty glasses to tell me those dots on the boot mail demand the ink spots. Desires a generous portion of potent pudding as only served by the ink spots with a handle of ink. Gates, pass your plate. If I didn't care, would it be the same? Would my every prayer be connected with just your name? Beyond compare Would all this be true If I never By 1954, R&B doo-wop was standing on its own as a new music style. Groups like the Ravens, Sonny Till and the Oros, the Five Echoes, the Early Flamingos, and other groups served as the representatives of this new music style called R&B doo-wop. Sonny saw this opportunity to write arrangements on classic standards like Holiday for Strings and St. Louis Blues and his own new adventurous compositions like Spaceship Lullaby. <laughs> At this point, Sonny began coaching and rehearsing the vocal group The New Sounds for projects he had in mind as early as 1953. Sonny talks about this period. You see, in Chicago, I was teaching about uh, four quartets at the same time. Uh, some of the things they uh, were doing there and doing there, they got it from me, you know, from uh, these quartets. Each one of them had a different style. And uh, it's very interesting, you know, what they sing. And in this particular quartet, I taught them to sing like a band. And they were doing things like uh, Holiday for Strings and Lullaby, Birdland, things like that. A totally different style. And they, they were very sincere. They all loved music. It was too bad that they never came out of Chicago. Uh, but I'm going to release some of the things that, so the world can hear what I've been doing, because I've been doing a lot of things. Included for this segment is the rare rehearsal of the composition, My Sweet from 1953 with the new sounds. And I love you so, I'd grant each wish you crave, 
At one point, Sonny decided to go into further regions musically, and in this interview clip expresses his view. They was most indoctrinated with Bop and all that, that, that generation. So I had to just uh, use my Cosmo strategies and psychology. See, everybody might be on a different plane. If they listen, they can fit in the society that's going to be. And that's what I had to do. I had to tell well, John, play and don't play. So he hadn't played. Nobody heard John Gilmore yet. Play and don't play, because I'm busy instructing you on a lot of things. And one day I'll tell you, John, play, and then the world can hear you. So actually, the world hadn't heard John Gilmore yet, because I was busy playing my low profile, realizing that America would reach the point where the only thing it had to offer was jazz. But the whole world had been trying to steal it and all that. But they haven't heard what I'm doing, because I was doing things and I wasn't doing things, playing a part. You see, like the whole, it's just like a drama with me. So the main thing is to come here on the planet and make everybody think I'm one way and all the intellectuals and all the government forces would be fooled. Now I fool them. By 1956, Sara had been performing live with his new bebop band at Budland featuring tenor saxophonist John Gilmore. The band was tight and on fire hitting all their marks with their solos. Provided is an excerpt from the March 1956 Budland performance with Big City Blues. <laughs> you not a myth whose reality are you if you are not a myth whose reality are you labor day of 1958 sunra led a jam session at the pershing ballroom the performance included baritone saxophonist pat patrick trombonist jj johnson tenor saxophonist gene ammons bassist ronnie boykins and drummer robert barry Included is an excerpt of the composition Just You, Just Me from this spectacular live performance. Ha <laughs> ha 
Sun Ross speaks of being shown another form of music by the creator. He told me to turn all that loose. He wanted to teach me another form of music. He said it meant I'd turn loose my friends, my career, turn loose life itself, everything, whole destiny would be changed. I'd do that. And I have music that the world never dreamed could exist. That's what I was promised, and he would teach me. So then I left all my friends, left my career, family. I left everything, and I had to travel alone. I was instructed to do that. So I did that. And sure enough, I do have music beyond the calculations of the mind. It's a matter of using it at this point. September of 1958, Sonny and the band were again performing at Budland. For this section, we give focus on tenor saxophonist John Gilmore, soloing on the composition without a song in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
We again return to this 1958 Budland performance with the band playing the summer arrangement on the pop tune Tequila, recorded by the group The Champs a few months earlier. March 3rd of 1959, vocalist Hattie Randolph recorded vocals with the band for the Sound Sun Pleasure album. Hattie sang to the Sun Ra arrangements on Monk's Round Midnight and the Standard Back in Your Own Backyard. Included is an excerpt of takes one through three of Round Midnight. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is just an overview of some of the content found in the Transparency 0316 box set Sun Ra, The Eternal Myth Revealed Volume 1, historically covering 1933 through 1959. It's my pleasure to make available for the first time to Sun Ra fans everywhere an in-depth look into Sun Ra and his music career through his own narration. I'd like to thank Michael Shepard and everyone who assisted me in the preparation of this presentation. And now there's a word we told you of. I'm Michael D. Anderson, Executive Director of the Sun Ra Music Archive. There must be a cosmic dimension of music which is attuned to the space age needs of the rulers as well as the peoples of the earth.